to my channel. So today we are going to draw and paint uh, a pheasant bird. Now I've got the little picture up in the top corner, but what I am going to do is I'm going to use that as a reference, but I'm going to change it a little bit. Um, I'm not going to have it exactly the same because I drew one the other day that I was really happy with and I'm going to use the same um, sort of feeling of the other one so it's if you go through my channel I've uploaded it as a short um, but I'm going to I did it in ink but I'm going to use basically the same shape but I'm going to add just a couple of differences so I'm going to change the tail feathers because I don't want them just straight flat out the back and I'm going to have more of the legs. So I'm going to start with whoops, the little head of the bird. So the head and everything's going to say the same. Now his head and his beak are the same length. So head, beak. So I measure everything against other parts of the body. <clears throat> it helps a lot. So I start with the head usually on any animal that I draw. So then I'm going to come down and around here because they've got beautiful plumes on their heads and beautiful red around their eyes. So I'll start with that. And the music in the background, if you hear that, is Epidemic Sound. It's a royalty-free, I paid reference site, paid music site. Because I like to have a bit of background music when I'm working. Come down and around here. It's got a little thick neck. It's got beautiful bright eyes. Now... Just going to bring up the screen on my other computer so I can see the picture a bit better. There we go. Okay. So now his body, and I've got the perfect colour in my Schminky watercolours for this bird because he's. Um, really golden brown. He's really quite a beautiful bird. So now the head is one, two, three, usually three times the body. So one, one, two, three. So I'll have his body come to about there. And he's, you see he's got a bit more of a downward tilt in the reference photo, but I'm going to have him a little bit up more so I'm going to change from the reference slightly because I want to see because they've got such beautiful tails I really want to add I want to have the tail coming out more on display so I'm going to show more of his tail feathers now his tail is a little bit longer than his body so his body's that long so yeah we've got the tail about the right length So that's the trick is to have, like, I measure everything against everything else. I can make this middle tail feather a fraction longer. Like that. <clears throat> so I'm, I did a, a picture the other day that I was, I like the tail on it. So I just want to keep with that style of tail. So I'm not doing exactly the same as the reference. I've just altered the tail because I want to be able to see more of that. Because the tail's just gorgeous. So you're just changing that a fraction, just giving them more of a flared out tail. So I'm just drawing the stripes in because they've got very stripy feathers on their tails, which are quite beautiful. Like that, and he's got little fluffy bits coming out of his butt, butt there. Okay, cool. I'm happy with that. Now I can go back to the traditional, the actual reference. And he's got his wings tucked back here. And I can't see his legs in that first reference, but I'm going to draw them. I mean, can't go far wrong. He's got little... I can I can put grass, but I just... I might do that. I might just 
I might just stick with the grass. We'll just stick with the grass, shall we? Um. I'm going to do some grass around his feet. I've got to erase that little bit. Where's my eraser? I've gone a bit heavy on the grass there. So I'm just going to change the shape of fraction. And I'm going to um, adjust his legs a little. Just a little. I'm just going to get up another reference if I can so I can get a better look at the legs. Okay, so his legs are a bit more back. His legs are about here. So I'm just going to give him a little leg walking there. Can I see their feet? I can't see the feet. <laughs> okay, so a little dew claw. I'm just going to do it quite simply. And I'll, I will put grass around it. So I'm just doing it like that and I'll just pop grass. So you can only just see sort of roughly the shape of the legs. Not too much. Okay, happy with that. I just want to be able to see a little bit of the leg. Alright, back to the reference. Now, he's got beautiful feathers. So I'm going to do this in, yeah, my, my spinky watercolours. He's got a white around here. He's got red. He's got sort of blue that comes to there. I'm going to trim off this little bit. I'm going to erase this little bit here again. So it's got a bit rough. So you can adjust and readjust as you need to. As you need to. Now he's got beautiful feathers on his wings. That are There's the greyish ones down here that come to the back. Like that. Then he's got really soft light brown feathers. Coming down onto his wing here. So I'll just rough those in. Got to not make them hard and pointy like that. They're softer feathers than that. They're really quite pretty and soft. Come down and around. <clears throat> and then on his back, on his wings here, I've got to erase a little bit. Soften that up. And then draw rounded shapes because his feathers of his body come around his wings and then he's got the most beautiful pattern on his wings on his wing feathers they're brown and white and all kinds of beautiful colors and then he's got more they they go into more of a dark line on the main part of the body got beautiful long feathers so all around here is all just dark so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go straight in now with color I'm going to grab my bring my have a sip of me coffee so my coffee doesn't go cold <laughs> like that and then I'm going to grab my brush I'm just going to use again a bit of bit of cloth because I always have a bit of cloth handy to wipe my brush on to get rid of excess moisture. I didn't get water for my watercolour. It wasn't that silly. Okay, have I got any water handy? Put a little bit here. I need to go and get some water. I'll be two seconds. <laughs> I'm a silly duffer. I'm just going to grab some water out of the tap. I'll talk to you while I'm doing it. I'm just grabbing some water out of my bathroom tap, which is just around the corner here, like that, because I forgot to top up my water, because I'm a silly person. There we go. Got my water. Now I'm happy. Coming back, because watercolour, water is pretty important. <laughs> Just saying, water is pretty important for watercolour. So, problem solved. Got some water now. Note to self, don't forget the water for watercolour. So, I am going to start with his little beak. But I'm going to start with yellow ochre, very diluted. Really diluted. Take off some extra, excess moisture with my brush. On my bit of cloth, and I'm just going to fill that in with that super duper diluted yellow ochre, like that. All right, and I'll let that 
dry a little bit. And I'm going to go into his eye, and his eye is a beautiful red, beautiful red. So I'm going to go straight into my ruby, ruby red. I've got a ruby red in my schminkies, which is a wonderful, vibrant red. I'll bring that closer, palette closer so you can see it. I'll pop the ruby red up there. So you can see the ruby red on the palette. And then I'm going to pop that. I'm going to be careful not to touch the yellow ochre. And I'm going to work that around the red part of the eye. This will take a few layers. This will take a couple of layers. Hello, Joe. How are you? Oh, I'm glad. I love pheasants. They're the most beautiful bird. I'm, a, I'm very much a bird person. I adore birds. I love drawing them. Hubby and I sat yesterday. We were out in our back. We've got a farm and we're sitting out the back watching them, watching all the, not the pheasants, but other birds play. Little wrens playing and they were just gourd magpies. It was, they were gorgeous. They're my favourite things. I love birds. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry a little bit and I'm going to go onto his body. And for his body, I am pretty much going to use transparent sienna, diluted to begin with, because it's a beautiful reddy brown. Beautiful reddy brown. And I'm just going to take that in a wash. I probably need a bigger brush around his whole body. And I'm using hot press watercolour paper. I actually got another type of paper. I got some, this is um, my, uh, what's it called? Arches, Arches watercolour paper. I usually use Arches. It's just terribly expensive here. So I actually got some Fabriano hot press the other day that I've got to give a go, give it a try. So, loved your box of paintings too. Oh, thank you. Yeah, they were for a girlfriend at work. They're her little dog. And he just had the cutest face. <laughs> so he's just, he was adorable. And I'd never painted that brindle colour before. So it was really fun to try and get that brindle correct. So, but yeah, he was fun. He was fun. He's just a quirky looking little pup. He's a quirky, gorgeous looking little pup. So that's transparency ended there. I'm just going to take it up his tail as well, but I've got to be careful to leave strips because he's got different colours on his tail. I've just got to just paint in amongst... What is this music? This is music is doing weird things. Hang on, so I'm just going to go to the next song if I can. It's a bit, it's sort of jazzy, but it's just doing stuff that I just need, I need classical. Give me classical. I want classical. Give me classical. There we go. I'll try that one. That's better. <laughs> That's a bit more like me. Make it a bit brighter. So I'll come down here. So what are you up to for today? I've got to go to work in an hour or two. <laughs> Which I love work, don't get me wrong. I love work, but I also love painting. And I don't want to leave my painting. Um, I'm very lucky. I have a great job, but home's good. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so what time is it now? It's 8.30. So I've got, a couple, I've got an hour before I have to start getting organised. So hopefully I can get this bird mostly done, probably all done. So I'm just doing light washes. Take that to the end of his tail. Because yeah, it's it's Monday morning here. It's an overcast, pretty cool Monday morning. Which is fine. I like cooler weather. I'm just gonna take these sort of fanny bits. He's got fairy feathery fan out bits there. Right. This is gonna take definite just watching before bed. Eleven fifteen. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't know how I can't stay up late. <laughs> I was in bed at like 8 o'clock last night. I'm terrible. I, I am such an old person when it comes to going to bed. <laughs> uh, so I am just popping in. I'm going to go add that this is going to get stronger and stronger. I might even use a little bit of Caput Mortem, which is a beautiful sort of rusty red colour. But it's probably along the lines of what I need. Now I've also got that here I think. I think I've got Caput Mortem in here. Yes I do. Or oh, it's actually Indian Red on this palette. Indian Red and Caput Mortem are very similar. I'll just clear off this top 
Bay, so you can see my Caput Mortem. Oh, sorry, Indian Red. It's a gorgeous, rusty, browny red. It is just gorgeous. One of my favourite colours. So, and I'm going to take this onto the bottom of his chest because he is much darker on his underbelly under there. And I take that and blend it down. I've got to try and soften these edges. So I'm just going to wet the edge of my brush and drag that paint that I've already put on the paper, drag it around just to help it'll come out like it'll look f like it's fading into the, the back end of the bird, which is what I want. But I want to get rid of any hard lines. I don't want hard lines. So by dampening the brush and just dragging it out, it takes away the hardness. So see how that's sort of blended in with that red? Now his head is the most beautiful turquoise and green and blue. So I'm going to start with a turquoise. I'm going to start with cobalt turquoise which is a really soft, for the first layer, really soft blue turquoise for the, the first layer. I'm going to take that around. The colours are so gorgeous. Like I'm, I'm, I've got the little reference pick up in that top left hand corner, <clears throat> but you've got to um, really zoom in on it, I suppose, to be able to see the colours. I've got the picture zoomed in on my iPad so I can um, see it much more clearly. I'm going to fill that in and around. Like that. Take it around the edge. Around his little head. There we go. And I'm going to have to let that dry for a minute. See lots of pheasants here. Unfortunately, lots of... Oh, wow, okay. We don't get them here. Like, I, I, haven't, I haven't actually ever seen a pheasant in the wild. I've seen them, like, in people who have them as pets and in aviaries and whatever, but I haven't seen them. I don't think we have them wild. We have quail. Like, I suppose they're a distant relative. We have lots of quail, which are beautiful. And I used to have quail in my aviary. They're just so, so such relaxing little birds. So I'm going to go now. I'm having a quick look at him. I've got to try and make up a stronger turquoise. I have no idea how I'm going to do it. I'm going to mix a bit of a bluey green and I might add a bit of green and a bit more blue just to see if I can make a more, well it's not going to be a turquoise, it's going to be a stronger green, more of a um, dark, there we go, actually that's not bad. That's, uh, I mixed indigo with a bit of green, a bit of a, a bit of a bright green that I had on my palette, just to blew it off a little bit. In the UK, yeah. Yeah, you guys have lots of beautiful wildlife, lots of beautiful birds. I love the birds. We have tons, of, we have super bright coloured birds here, like, but like parrots. We have a million parrots which are just divine. They are gorgeous. Parrots, cockatiels, cockatoos, galahs, rosellas. We have all of them on the farm here. Finches, but not many game birds. Not many game birds at all. The odd emu, very rarely, but <laughs> we've had one of our neighbours had emus and one of them got in one day. Um... So that's looking better. That's looking better. And up north we've got cassowary, which is my actual favourite bird on earth. They're the most magnificent bird. Cassowary. Now, I am going to have a look. What other colours I need? I almost need like an emerald green. I don't have anything that fits that emerald. I'm going to try maybe this Helios turquoise. Not Helios, Helios Green, sorry. This is super, super strong. I'm not going to have it everywhere, just around the edge. I know, being, yeah, they are divine, aren't they? We're very lucky, but England, you guys have that beautiful birds. 
Because you're from Queensland originally? Because you have those kind of... You had the... Have I got that right? You're from Queensland? Okay, come around the back here. He's also got that line. Now that red's dry, I can take that line through the centre of his eye. And it comes around and across out into a point. Oh, Adelaide! Oh, okey joke. Been to Adelaide once. <laughs> when I was a kid, my mum and dad drove us there. Alright, I've got to blend that. Come down and around. I'm just going to drag that down onto the feathers on his neck. So would you ever come back? Would you ever come back to Australia? Or it's just too bloody hot? <laughs> uh, I like the idea of being in England. It's much cooler. All right, I'm happy with that. I've got to be a bit careful. I've got to stay away from the green, but I can add the iris. Sorry, the pupil. I can add his little pupil. I've just got to stay away from the wet paint. So I'll pop his little pupil in. And then around his pupil is going to be bright. Too expensive now? Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. It is very expensive. Everything's out of reach now, pretty much. That's why I'm... Thank goodness I've got painting as a hobby. <laughs> I used to be a horse rider. That was terribly expensive. Um, so I'm going to go back in with my with my uh, transparent sienna. This is probably the colour that I use the most. This is my favourite colour and it is a true... fits most animals. Like this colour is just divine. And can use it in most fur tones like especially tigers dogs this this I used in that brindle I use this I mix this with just about everything I've got to leave the white of the paper though I've got to be careful to still keep that white for the white on the tops of the feathers and you can see that color is starting to come to life it takes a few layers and I'm now going to drag that down into the belly colors so again, just clean my brush, damp it, and drag the edges down and around. Down and around. What colour is it? It's transparent sienna in the schminky, schminky colours. And it is divine. And it's my favourite. I go it's my go-to. I use it for on pretty much every painting I've ever done has got since I've since I found this colour, has got this colour in it. <laughs> But yeah, it's Schminky's Transparent Sienna. And it is just divine. So now I'm just starting. It's literally the same colour. I'm just building up the layers. So I start with a thin layer and then I work my way to dark. You can see that top picture. His tail is not opened. I've got, But I opened up the tail because I just love the tail. <laughs> it is a gorgeous colour. It truly is. And he's also got that green on parts of his tail. But I'm going to add this transparent sienna in first. Take it up. Now I'm starting to go in the directions of the feathers. Like a little bit more pigment, a little bit less water. So you get, you can see more of the strokes. It's less blended. And take that up. You can see how these guys blend in with the grass with all these beautiful colours. Oops, got a bit too much water on there. But that's all right. I'll just dry my brush. Take the moisture out of it, dip my brush back in, and it absorbs it back up like that. Yeah, it's one of my, it's my go-to colour. That Caput Mortem or Indian Red. I don't love the red brown. I love the earthy browns and the red browns and golds. I love the golds. In the Art Spectrum, which is an Australian watercolour, there's a gorgeous um, gold Australian red gold. And it's just beautiful. I actually have my palette out just in case. My Australian palette of uh, Art Spectrum. 
because it's a couple of really unusual colours that you can't get in any other brand. So he's starting to come to life now. He's starting to come to life. Take this right down onto his bottom feathers. Now I'm looking at his wing. Now his wings, he's got he has got some of this red on it but mainly it's a much lighter gold so I'm going to carefully add a little bit of diluted cap uh, transparent sienna as you can see on some of these highlighted feathers and then when once that's dry I might add in and I'm literally just using the side of the brush to touch the paper that gives you that feather effect so I'm not drawing individual feathers or individual little lines I'm literally using the side of the brush to suggest feathers so you just lay your brush pull it towards the direction you're going like that I've got to stay away so I'm basically just pooping like just squishing the, the brush on the paper like that okay so I'm going to leave that for a second having a look at my reference I've got to darken up under here so I'm going to use again transparent sienna and I'm going to mix this time a bit of cobalt blue with it. A bit of cobalt blue and see what happens. Because I need to shadow up. I just want to darken up the underbelly. So I'm adding blue, which will make this... See, that's make that a really quite a brownie. Oh, you can't see the palette. Why can't you see the palette? There we go. It's made that quite a brownie. It's browned it up a bit more. So I added uh, cobalt blue. And I'm going to take that around this bottom part of his body because it is more shadowed and you start to get the three-dimensional effect it starts to look a bit more 3d and then I'm going to start adding my little dogs just run under my feet he's being a little smooch little smoochy puppy he likes me being home in the mornings now You're going to come up and say hello, Bear Bear? You're going to come up and say hello to Joe? Yeah, he's the Bear Bear. He's sitting at my feet. <laughs> he's my little friend. He comes and helps me do art every morning. Don't you, Maddie? You're my little friend. My little best friend. You're in Sister Pip. You are. Okay, hop down now. You put white fur all over me. <laughs> okay, so, so that's yeah, transparent sienna and cobalt blue to just darken up shadowy areas all right that just darkens that up nicely <laughs> he says hi back uh, he's such a cute little dude I'm now going to go in with a super dark I'm going to add super dark so it's what is it I can't even see what color this is uh, I can't see hang on it's green it is Quin, I think maybe it's quinacridone green. I don't. I, I can see Q. Because <laughs> I, I painted it on a colour chart and then I put the paint over it. I can't see what I wrote. <laughs> so I'm just darkening this bit up with pure, like almost pure pigment. There's very little water in it. Just to get the darkest tone that I want coming down and around there onto his neck. Like that. And I can actually take that too. Take a little bit of that around through the middle part here and around the top of his eye onto that little cresty bit like that and then just sweep it out so it looks like you can see the little feathery bits so I'm pretty much using the one brush for this painting um, I'm not going crazy and using 10 million different brushes I'm, I'm very much so um, a one brush wonder I, I'll use two brushes max in any piece that I do I just bounce backwards and forwards between the two I'm just blending I'll use a thin one like this because I can use a tip for detail I've even got the other one here and a middle size one like a middle size one like that to do if it's a bigger piece this is only small like this is the size of my hand I like working on small pieces I can get more done faster because I'm very impatient I'm gonna now add a little bit 
I'm going to get go back to my Indian red, and I'm going to get quite a bit of pigment, and I'm going to start to add that onto these back feathers, just on the top. I'm not covering covering them completely. I almost want it just to highlight the tops of the feathers. That pheasant means business. He does. <laughs> He's, he's on the march. He's on the march. Now, I'm going to use this same red, Indian red, or Caput Morton would do, which is another beautiful, beautiful colour. And I'm just going to outline these feathers. You can see I've left the white of the paper. Is the white on the bird. I'm off to bed, catch and replay. No worries, mate. Good night. Thank you for hanging out. It was awesome to see you again, Dull. I'll be back tomorrow, same time, with a bit of luck. So have a great sleep, Dull, and I'll see you when I'm looking at you. And thank you for being here. It's always lovely. I'm going to take these feathers now, down and around. And I'm going to go, so this is transparent sienna with Indian red over the top. Have another sip of me coffee before it goes cold. Because you know, I did an ink drawing of this guy the other day and I just, I'm, it's just beautiful. So I thought, oh, I'm going to paint him. All right. And now they get further apart as they go up onto his body. Like that. And slightly stronger. Like that. And I'll take those right round. And they're just, you can see I'm just using the tip of the brush and I'm just sweeping it, scooping it round. You know, it's really not as hard as you would think it is. I used to be, when I was when I started first started doing drawing birds, I was terrified of all the feather detail. But you can really make it as simple as you like. Now I'm adding another, just the, using the very tip of my brush, just lines because they've got quite stringy feathers under their tail. And I'm going in basically with pure Indian red for that. And now I'm also going to go back onto his tail up here and add some Indian red just around the edges of the transparent sienna. Um, oh, hang on, I'm going to go have another look at my pheasant pictures. Some of them have lighter tails, some of them have darker tails. I'm not going to go too much more. I'm just going just to shadow up the darker ones underneath, that's all. So the tops, tops are lit, the bottoms are, are, are darker, like that. Okay, and then under his little butt butt, they really are gorgeous birds. Come down to his legs. Alright, clean my brush, clean my brush. And his little legs are grey. So I'm going to make burnt umber cobalt blue. Burnt umber and a touch of cobalt blue to make a grey. And dilute that down. And that's his little leg colour. Makes a brownie grey, which will fit in with all the browns on him. Like that. Right. And I'm also going to use that grey onto the underneath of these feathers down the bottom here because he does have some greyish feathers underneath there at the very bottom righto and I'm going to pop some grass in now so for the grass I'm just going to go with a bit of sap green a bit of sap green 
that. I'll add some olive green. I'll mix up an olive just so that the grass isn't all just one flat colour. An olive, so I'll just add a bit of green and a bit of blue. That makes an olive. Bit of green, bit of blue, bit of brown. There we go. Bit of green, bit of blue, bit of brown. And just take that into the darker areas on the grass. Just like that. And I'm going to go back now because you can see the feathers have faded quite a lot on his neck. And I'm going to add a bit more of this vibrant green around here. Blend it out like that. just strengthens up that colour. I've got to add a bit more yellow ochre to the bottom part of his beak because the bottom part of his beak's in shadow. Oops, got a bit of a blob there but that's okay. Just to darken up I'm gonna blend that. Doesn't want to blend, it's alright. Got to get it to a point. So I'm going to wet my brush, just make my brush a little bit more damp and drag that paint to the point of his beak. Like that, that's better. I'm happier with that. And also add it a little bit up the top there. Now, that red has just about dried. So I am going to add yellow, bright yellow around his eye. So I've got to clean my palette a little bit. And then get this yellow and pop it around. Whoops, the days have gone over his pupil there, but it doesn't matter because it's dry. Oh, not, not as dry as I thought it was, apparently. That's alright, I can go over that again. I'll just let that dry a little bit more. I will go back onto his tummy for a minute. And I'm going to get a bit of um, a stronger brown, a, red, a more ready brown. This one is mahogany. So I'm going to grab a bit of mahogany and I'm going to take that onto his tummy and get these browns on his tummy a bit stronger. They really are quite glorious, these little birds. All right. Like that. Okay, and I'm also going to take that mahogany, just add a little bit of texture onto his feathers on his legs, and add a little bit of dots onto his legs where his legs are, and underneath, just a little bit of shadow, a bit, of, bit more definition, like that. I've got to go back onto his eye, I'm going to go back to my yellow, clean my brush, go back to my yellow, I've got to try and get that eye bright. They've got super bright little eyes. Very carefully using the tip of my brush. Very carefully using the very point of my brush. And my brush is a silver black velvet, size 4. And I use round brushes. I like me round brushes. So that's about as much of that as I'm going to get on there. I'm going to add maybe one more layer of transparent sienna because it's such a beautiful reddy brown and I'm going to add that onto the top of his back because he's got lovely 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 colour that I just need to have it around him a little bit more just need to add that into those back feathers a little bit more give him a little bit more contrast to the rest of him because he's dull, more dull and dark down the bottom and he's more vibrant on top. Again, I'll take it up onto his top feathers, onto his tail. Stay, staying off the white areas, just adding it onto the, the tops of the red bits. There we go. Like that. All right. And a little bit more, maybe, around his bottom end around there, going in between those feathers, 
there. I'm quite happy with that. I'm quite happy with that. A little bit more red maybe around his tum there. Right, I've got to get some more vibrant red onto his eyes. So I'm going to go back to my ruby. That red yellow should be dry now and I'm just going to work around the edge of that ruby. Red, red, with ruby red I mean. Edge, edge of the eye with ruby red. And make that much brighter. Because it dried back quite a lot. There we go. That's looking good. Happy with that. And the same on the bottom. Whoops, I've got to get a bit more water on my brush. It's not moving around. Get a little bit more water on my brush. And drag that around. Like that. Okay. Now. I will add a little bit of yellow onto his beak as well. I use transparent, uh, no, what is it, the yellow ochre, but I'm going in with a touch of bright yellow just to help lift that up. And I reckon I'm going to call that done. I'm quite happy with that. For a, for a watercolour sketch, I'm going to sign that down the bottom here and I am going to call that done. So he took, what, 45 minutes from start to finish, from bare paper to that pheasant. Anyone can have a go. You should all give it a try. It's not, not terribly complicated. Um, yeah, so, and I just showed you how simply you can do feathers. It literally is the tip of your brush and resting the side of your brush on the paper creates that feather effect. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day, and I will be back tomorrow with more